Hello and welcome to For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewers' Comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. Also, I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Please don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. And if you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it if you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about. It's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that on the spot. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. First comment comes from M Wills hyphen NN four D O. And it says is of the claim with the fact of the and then dollar store quotations claimants hyphen sensation and dollar store quotations with the meat of the cup hyphen standard with the fact by your claimants hyphen knowledge question mark which uh, I mean as I have to from what I see here guess that this individual M. Wills has a very rudimentary idea of what correct sentence structure is. I mean, they do have a basis. They know how to use positions and lodials. However, they don't know how to position them correctly. So it's a very beginner level. And so what I did in my Kuleana back was to syntax what they wrote and then explain, I said, learn correct sentence structure first before touching your keyboard on this channel. And, you know, sometimes I come in a little soft, sometimes I come in a little hard. And it depends upon the energy of the individual who is commenting, my perception of that energy. And so that's why I did what I did here. And so I'm going to give a little bit more closure to help out M. Wills as my gift to them, as they are a novice. Here's the thing. Every correct sentence structure must start with a cause, and then a concern, and then a verb. And if you're going to do a correct sentence structure question, you would take the verb, put it at the beginning. But that doesn't change the fact that it must start with a cause. So it would have to be, is for the claim of the fact with the now look they put well you see in the word claimants hyphen sensation you see after the t between the t and the s and claimants there's an apostrophe there the same symbol is in front of the c in claimant in correct sentence structure number one it's one word one meaning one symbol one meaning one function blah 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 you can't have an apostrophe mean one thing and it means something different when you put it at the beginning. So from what I can see here and from my experience as an uh, English major in college many, many years ago, I'm guessing that they want the apostrophe, apostrophe in front of the C and after the N in sensation to be quotations, which is a different function. So you'd have to have two apostrophes together, make a quotation. I, that's what you would have to have there. But in any case, the reason why it's not correct is because not only he starts off the sentence with of the and then follows with the, which is not correct, but it says of the and then quotations. So basically what it's saying, it's saying is of the claim with the fact of the with the meat of the, you see what I'm saying? Of the with the meat. Because number one, it says of the, and then there's a space, and then the dollar store quotation, and then, another, you know, the claimant sensation, and then another dollar store quotation, and then another space, and then width. 
So there's a break in the continuance of the evidence there. Do you see what I'm saying? That is why in the syntax that I do, it says fact, it says of is a, is an adverb, the is a verb, and then with is a pronoun. There's double spacing between the two and the four. That's why the first sentence is basically three, four, one, three, four, one, two, one, two. That's one sentence. And then there's a break in the continuance of the evidence, excessive spacing, two spaces. And then it, the next section starts off with four, one, three, blah, blah, blah. That's why it looks like that. And claim and sensation is not on the page because it's dollar store quotes. So I hope that clears it up a little bit. I know I kind of got a little long winded there. Bottom line, it's nowhere near correct sentence structure. So hopefully whoever M. Wills is will get serious about grammar, contact me, apply for a workshop, and get it done. Because I seem to remember other similar things, offerings from M. Wills over the last year or two, and they seem to be stuck in the same place that they've been a year ago. Which, I've said it again and again, folks, if you're going to progress... You got to take workshops. You got to find a tutor. You got to put your foot to the pedal, put it down to the floor, commit to it, and do it. Otherwise, you're just going to be in the same place next year at this time as you were this time this year as you were last time last year. Next comment comes from member April, and they say, I did put that in Google search when you mentioned it in a prior video. Sorry, not sure which one, but I didn't really dig into it yet, but I will. I did get the book Logic by Lionel Ruby. Not sure which video you suggested that in either. It was a library book, so I didn't completely get to the end. But what I did read sure helped. Thank you for that. I did find it in an online archive, so hope to finish it. I prefer books VRS online reading. I think what they are referring to is what I talked about, the trivium method. Trivium method, which is grammar, logic, and rhetoric. And she's talking about the uh, logic aspect of it. It's a book of logic by Lionel Ruby. There's also plenty of material on the internet regarding logic and logical fallacies and things like that. And there's also a Trivium website, which I did post that in the community section of this channel. If you take the time to uh, look through that. Next comment comes from Isaac. And they are a member. Thank you very much. And they said, I thoroughly enjoy your efforts in demonstrating the contradictions within the common use of the English language. Your performance underscores the significance of cognizing and assimilating the psychology of this technology as to avoid contradictions and negative states of condition when employing correct grammar to communicate and contract. Your humor, which you intertwined with your live stream, was also enjoyable and refreshing. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for those kind words. I appreciate that. And uh, it's a very rare individual that does appreciate my particular brand of humor. So thank you. I appreciate that comment. Next comment comes from Roger Track 7. And they say, beware of the purple thumb. They are pure scam merchants. Around three years ago, I foolishly was ripped of by these scammers. I think they mean off. For $90, lesson learned, and never got my supposed CPAS and the live lifetime. I think they mean claim. Was a total joke. I do hold the evidence. And then they put a full colon at the end there. However, nothing follows that. So I guess they're not sharing the evidence with me or with us. So I guess the... the Next question is, what are you going to do about it, Roger Tracks? What are you going to do about it, bro? Nah, I'm just kidding. There's not much you can do about stuff like that. Again, you know, it's like I say, you know, contract is by consent. Nobody twisted Roger's arms to contract with the purple thumb. He made a leap of faith and trusted people that he probably didn't know and probably didn't vet. And this is what happens. And this is a valuable lesson. In contracting, make sure you know who you're contracting with before you contract with them. If there are any doubts, 
don't do it. Don't send your 90 bucks. Keep it. Uh, so, lesson learned, I suppose, Roger. Thanks for sharing. Next comment comes from Mac One Juno, and they say the Matrix is a fiction system. Neo, that system is our enemy. Due to intentional miseducation and ignorance that a remedy of it, CSSC PSG exists. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to educate. But until we do, these people are still part of that fiction system, and that makes them a complicit part of it until CSSC CPSG educated. You have to understand most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inured. So inured? Do they mean injured or do they mean inured? I'm not sure. So hopelessly dependent on the fiction system that they will fight to protect it. And this, is, I suppose, is a play on words. Uh, to paraphrase Morpheus from the movie The Matrix when he's speaking to Neo. And I did do a text coolie on it to this, and I also did a video coolie on it to this, and I'll do another video coolie on it to this right now, and say that whether someone chooses to be educated or someone chooses to fight to remain a slave to the fiction system, it's a choice. Contract is by consent. And the minute Morpheus and Neo begin thinking that they have the authority to make claims for others, that's a trespass. Each individual, like Neo, must come to that choice by themselves. They can't be forced into it. No one can make the choice for them. They have to do it themselves, just like every other person who remains indentured to the fiction system or those who choose to extricate themselves from it. It's all choice. It's all choice. It's not up to me to decide what the world needs. It's not up to me to suddenly decide that I'm the commander-in-chief of the world of planet Earth and I decide what's right and what's wrong. It's not up to me because no one gave me their consent for that to happen. And I wouldn't want that anyways. What kind of egomaniac would want something like that? That's a rhetorical question. Thanks for the comment, Mac One Juno. Next comment comes from Ken Ken Dreamer, six three seven six, and they say, "I remember see a court brief with his name on in a long time ago, and I thought it was interesting how using colons and hyphen and the like changed the meaning on the document." Well, I do appreciate the sentiment behind that comment. Change is modification. Modification is perjury, to quote the late colon David Ivan Cohen Miller. And using colons is just basically, um, they represent position lodial phrases. It's punctuation, positioning your facts with correctness, using the mathematical interface on the grammar. Hyphens, of course, bring together compound facts, yada, yada, yada. But it doesn't change the meaning of anything. What it does is give closure to the meaning, would be a better way to say it. Thanks for the comment, Ken. Next comment comes from Conley818, and they say, colon, veil, space, colon, no hyphen, more, space, colon, hiding, and then nothing. So what do we have there? We have a pronoun in veil, and then we have a break in the continuance of the evidence with the colon and then followed by no hyphen more, which is also a pronoun. A space and then another break in the continuance of the evidence, which is a colon. And then we have hiding, which is another pronoun with a particle of negation, ing. Of course, no. No is no. Uh, and there's no full stop at the end, so it's just sort of dangling there. <laughs> So that is not correct sentence structure. It's just three pronouns. Uh, and I'm not sure what this individual is trying to convey. But thanks for whatever it is you're trying to articulate there, Conley. Next comment comes from user hyphen blah, 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 blah. And they say, in memory, your word is your bond is what my grandfather is telling me. This is what I recognize in your words of contract. Thank you. 
you're welcome. So your grandfather is telling you that your word is your bond. That's basically been a, a tried and true uh, concept, precept, principle throughout history. The only problem is, is that's not true for everybody. And that's where correct sentence structure comes in. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from J. Period Rumble Seed, and they say, "Not one two one two one two one two because of the future tense shout." And then they have a forward slash in quotations equals and e x c e p t here. I don't know what that means, because the sentence that that uh, I put up on the community section was, "By way of deception, thou shalt do war." period. And that's a Mossad mantra or whatever. And by is an adverb modifying way into a verb. Of is a an adverb modifying deception into a verb. Thou is an adverb modifying shout into an adjective in the future tense, which is coloring do into an adjective which is coloring war into a pronoun. Now, the reason why shout is an adjective and the reason why do is an adjective is because they're both tangible contract. Okay? And shout is future tense. Future tense or past tense does not affect the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word. Okay? The tangibility or non-tangibility of a word affects whether it's going to be syntax as tangible contract or non-tangible contract. Adverbs will only be non-tangible contract. Adjectives will only be tangible contract. Verbs can be either tangible or non-tangible. Same as pronouns. Tangible contract words will not be adverbs. Non-tangible contract words will not be adjectives. So on and so forth. So Jay Rumble Seed, I highly recommend checking out my syntax playlist and studying the difference between tangible contract and non-tangible contract and how one would credential that. Thanks for the comment. Oh, and by the way, I have no idea why you're bringing up the forward slash or the word E-X-C-E-P-T there because that's I don't see that anywhere in what I wrote or I mean typed out there. So I don't know if you're just reading something into it that's not there or maybe you're seeing something I'm not. And the final comment comes from Owen Bruce, 4120, and they say, classic example of someone perpetuating nonsense. Hard to believe people consume such tripe. Well, I haven't heard that word in a while. Hats off for that one. David covered a lot of ground in his videos and imparted useful aspects of the way the fiction system operates. Thanks for your commentary. That's a, that's a very, um, I like the way Owen articulated that in that David imparted useful aspects of the way the fiction system operates. Um, that's a perfect uh, summary of a lot of what David did there. And he's referring to the reaction video I did to Hannah Reloaded. Um, which is basically, I agree, with, I agree with his assessment of it being nonsense and tripe. And, you know, it is at first glance hard to believe, hard to think that people would, would really eat that stuff up. But then again, like I say in the video, you know, you, you, he, you see her and you see that video and her reaction. She, she makes content based on her sarcastic witty reactions to different topics that are outside the norm or outside the mainstream and her audience eats it up and supports her because they for some reason they vibe on her wavelength right and to me what she does is like the lowest common denominator of what you can do in society all right and the audience that consumes that is actually even below that lowest common denominator so it's less than zero but that's just my opinion everybody's entitled to it and uh, just check out the internet because that's 99 percent of what people are doing they're giving opinions 
without actually having any facts. Thank you for the comment, Owen Bruce. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you.